how does that the CIO was formed the first was called the committee for industrial organization. For you see, what actually happened was there was a resolution passed. We were independent ourselves, the Amalgamated Clothing Workers until 1932 when we were accepted into the uh, American Federation of Labor. Why they wouldn't accept us before was because there was another union in that jurisdiction, in that, which come of that jurisdiction, which is called the United Garment Workers of America, and uh, which we originated out of because we felt or the people in the industry at that time felt that the United Garment Workers wasn't representing all the clothing workers. They maintained, and uh, I think rightly so, I think the labor history will bear us out, that the United Garment Workers of America, AFL, only organized the most skilled operations in men's clothing, cutters, sleeves, hangers, and pocket mm -hmm. uh, makers, which is some one, and the basting, and the pocket, and the uh, more Im less important or less skilled operations, basting pullers, and button sewers, and buttonhole workers, mostly of those were women. They were, uh, ex they were not ex organized and then they they struck and Where was out of, in uh came out of the heart shaped and marks clothing company in chicago illinois I remember that. and uh they came out on strike and then the uh men joined them and the united gun workers didn't support them so they pulled off and that's how the amalgamated clothing workers came to be. Uh, the, uh, at the next convention, some of the people who did still have credentials to go to the national convention of the United Congress of yeah. America, Brother Frank Rosenblum, uh, was to try to get them to organize or support these strikers they were not heard on the floor, so they pulled away and formed them a rump convention in Nashville, Tennessee, and out of that came the Amalgamated Clothing Workers. So because of that, the AFL, American Federation of Labor, would not charter the Amalgamated. Mm -hmm. And we went independent and organized over 75% of the men's clothing industry that is suits and overcoats, um, as an independent union. Was um, the industry for women's clothing not as large as it is now? Uh, so this was men's clothing now. When the International why. Ladies Garment Workers organized in women's apparel. And and this is still separate from yes, the Amalgamated Men's yeah. Clothing. It's still clothing. separate, yeah. We all, we have a separate union. And, uh, Then finally, Hillman made an agreement with the executive board of the FL that we would not organize in anything except men's clothing, suits, and other clothes. And we would leave the cotton garment and work clothing field to the United Garment Workers of America. That was an agreement that we made to uh, be accepted into the American Federation of Labor. That was in 1932, and we stayed in two years. Yeah, we only stayed in two years when we got to, I believe it was in 19, I believe it was in the con National Convention of the American Federation of Labor when a committee was set up for industrial organization, but they never did anything about it. That's why at the convention that uh, when we were expelled, well, we weren't filled at that convention, but uh, Sidney Hillman and David Dubinsky of the International Lady Workers and John L. Lewis of the United Mine Workers, well, there's 13 internationals, the steel workers, the 
old Amalgamated Association of Iron, Steel, and Tin Workers, and they uh, brought it up that they hadn't done anything, although they had way passed the resolution to organize, especially in the basic industries, automobile, and of course, uh, during that time, industry began to change. Craft what was important in the Now, Alright, at this period, where were you? Uh, were you already working in the labor movement when all of this was happening? No, uh, I became a member along about this time because that's when they started all I, I, I became a member. My first union was the United Textile Workers, which did not uh, participate in this controversy. Some it split up. The uh, United Textile Workers was split up. That's why we formed what we call the TWOC Textile Workers Organizing Committee, which the Malgamator took responsibility to organize. That was one of the industries we felt should be organized and couldn't be organized along craft lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the big fight was over craft against mm -hmm. industrial organization. Uh, it, they had made an attempt under the ASL in the early days uh, to try to organize the automobile industry. And uh, when it became more, uh, began to get organized, the millwrights going down with this many, and the machinists going down with this many, and it was becoming disorganized. And it was proven there that they could not organize the industry. It was because of the cooperation of a lot of different unions were trying to rip the people, which would be the same that we felt, or the people were arguing at this time, that that would be the same as no union, uh, being disorganized. So that was why they, one of the AFL organizers of industrial basis, which they were supposed to be doing, or had passed a resolution to do. Now I joined the union about this time. Now was that when you were working in the overall plant? Yeah, I was working in the, no, I was working in a bag plant at the time, uh, where we made sugar bags. And, uh, I didn't work very long in the in an overall plant. And in fact, I only worked seven years. I was working when I was 14. And for seven years, I was, the only time I was spent in the factory, I got fired for union activity. I didn't last very long after I joined the union. Which was the first, though? The bag plant was the first uh, job? The overall. The overall, mm -hmm. and then the bag plant. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I didn't stay very long in the, in the overall plant. But uh, I went in and one of made sugar bags. They made the whole thing. They uh, they spin them in the weave and so it came on the textile. That's why I joined the textile workers. So then the split came about, and I was in the meantime I was fired, and I was caught in like some of others was caught in this controversy, and therefore. Uh, I actually had no representation. There was no laws to, in the meantime, the NRA was proven unconstitutional, and all of us who had made claims under under that for discrimination lost out because the law was proven uh, uh, declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court before we had the Wagner Act. So uh, then I. Uh, was an organizer paid by the amalgamated to try to organize sex dolls because we didn't have much clothing or garment work in the state of Alabama, which I was working in. What, about what year was this? 1936. I was out of work, actually, for more than a year. The blacklist was very, very much in effect at that time. Uh, we had a way to find out who was participating in the union. Jobs was hard to come by, especially if you were union. Well, then, all Where right. Where did you start? When you start organizing, you oh. said you went in and you, was, oh, well. you became an organizer. All right, can you tell me how, when you want to oh, organize well. a plant, how, do you go, how did you go well, about uh, it in 1936? Oh, well, the first thing, uh, where I got started out is my experience, experience as an organizer, a member of the organizing committee of the old Birmingham Central Labor Union, and uh, as a volunteer organizer. 
without pay. This committee. What, what, um, industry that they well, we were in anything. We were the, we were a, 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 a organizing committee. We were an organizing committee, and uh, I was still then working an evening shift mm -hmm. at the plant, and in the morning we'd go out and we 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 organized uh, volunteer organized we'd organize free bakeries in Birmingham. We worked our heads in the steel mills. All right, uh, but when they when you organized, they fired. went to different unions, right? When you organized oh, yes, the bakers, yeah, they yeah. went into the National Bakers. Bakery. That's right. They went into the United Baker Workers Union. Oh, yes, we put them, you see, because the unions didn't have the money back then to hire organized. More of it was done on the volunteer basis. The, the Birmingham Labor Union, is that what Birmingham it? Central Labor Union. Central, all right. That's was the this an organizing arm of the AF of L? No. It was independent? No. The central labor, it's, uh, the, you see, every city of any size that has as many seven unions forms a council. Delegates from those unions go to that council. That's the further organization in that city, just like we have a state body. Then the delegates of all the states, plus delegates from the central or city labor council, both paper captain states, and they have both assist unions on a statewide basis. It's, it's really a, a council or a, an organization of local unions within that city or that state to further the cause of the labor movement. I see. I see. So I was a delegate from my local union to that council. You were very I, young, weren't you? Yes, uh, 21. So uh, then when I got, I never thought about going on the staff of the state organizing. Never even thought about it because you know, I just didn't think about it until William Mitch, who was district rep district uh, president of district uh, district member now, the United Mine Workers, talked to me one day and said, "Why don't you make applications to go on the staff and organize?" And I I wrote the uh, Franz Daniel, who was then organizing director for the South for the amalgamated and textile workers. And it's the textile workers at this time now the CIO is in this uniform mm -hmm. are the committee for right. industrial organization. Mm -hmm. The amalgamated took responsibility to organize textile. And also we helped with money to finance the United Steel workers, but primarily because of the mines most of the mines being owned by the big steel companies, John L. Lewis and the United Mine Workers sponsored the United Steel Workers, and we all did help form the United Auto Workers. And uh, we had the, the main organizing committee was the SWOC, which was Steel Workers Organizing Committee, and PWOC, the Textile Workers Organizing Committee here in the South, particularly around Birmingham, because of the steel mm -hmm. industry and textiles. So I went, that's when I went on the staff in 1936, uh, organizing right, now in clothing or cotton garments, because it was practically no clothing here. And we distinct between clothing mm -hmm. and cotton garments. There was between men's suits, short coats, and overcoats, which we had overcoats, we <laughs> not much of them today. As again, Shirt, single pants, pajamas, and work clothes. But then we went into the to organize anything we could to uh, deal with this bill was off. Well, uh, what I'm interested in, one of the things I'm interested in finding out is if the organizing activities in say 1936 are dra were drastically different. And how you oh, go about organizing now. So how did you do no, it? How did you know, the actual, the actual uh, method of organizing is the same today as it was then. The problems are different, <coughs> as, as anybody would suspect. Fear is just as great for a different reason. <coughs> Some of the same reasons still exist, but primarily, I would say, the fear is different today. People are afraid for different reasons. Uh, 
fear, I think, is the main thing. But in the 30s, we always went in there to try first to go in and talk to people. And you try to get people who are more sympathetic, who are maybe have some person relatives or brothers or husband or father who is a member of the union already. Those are the best people to, to first you make your first contact. Uh, you go into a little, well, most of my work is in little towns, and it was almost impossible to find them. Once in a while, you might find a number of the railroad records. You have to be in the layer where there's a junction mm -hmm. railroad. We might find a here and there a person who'd been a member of the Cotton Union, especially during World War One. They, they went away someplace to get jobs, and they you had to join the Union in order to get the job. And, uh, we had to, once in a while, you would run into somebody who had one time or other during World War One, had worked in the defense industry and had been in the union and had worked in the world. So that's what you do first. You would try to find someone who's going to town and if you knew someone in that town who was sympathetic towards the union and see if they knew somebody in that plant that they knew that they could talk to. Then you try to form your organized committee within that bunch. There's no organized, an organized plan. Takes the people. That's the right. Plan. They can lead and devise and guide. But as far as the organizing, who can get you an organizing committee within the plan? Your chances of, of organizing that plan is very slim. All right. I can imagine the fear on the part of the workers themselves. But what about the rest of the community? How would they react when oh, someone came in to try to organize? And the 30s. 30s, naturally, the whole town, of course, because most of them depended. The town depended on usually, there's usually only been the one plant, so that most of the people worked in other things. Did most of the people in those plants live in company houses? Well, in textile they did at that time. Of course, they weren't outlawed. And later on, we got those uh, houses. So they stood in fear not only of losing they their did. job, but of actually being thrown out of their they home. They were. I've seen people have to put up housekeeping right out on the street. In Gadsden, Alabama, which was Alabama City at the time, and they still let big strike there in the bright mill. They were evicted. And I've actually saw people but they weren't beaten. They got the union. It survived all during some of those early days. Well, they were there. From the early days of organizing, it survived until the fact that it finally closed in the late forties. Due to the fact that they couldn't the company make statements, they could not get workers. So this is true of the day in the textile industry. Well, for the blacks, I mean, when the textile industry, they'd be in trouble. Younger people just don't enter that. You know, that means they like to do it. And uh, they did, didn't have any applications on file for his older people's ties and left them, left them the mail. The, all, all the applicants they had, practically all of them were over 15 years old in the applicants they had. That was before the first week of employment law was passed. They didn't dare to come to high flying. Well, how did you get to uh, up in Tennessee? Oh, well, we're skipping a long way. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's don't. Let's don't skip. Yeah, let's we're keep skipping. I've been going to Tennessee until 19, about 1940. Oh, uh, I worked up to organize the area shirt plant here. Because as I said, there wasn't much of this work in Alabama. The only two plants in, in Birmingham were two overall plants. We were organizing, you know, we kept organizing in the early days in the United Drama Order. And they were in the United Drama And there was a good local union. No thanks to the international union. We just had good, strong labor mo movement in Birmingham. And we had good, strong militant members in that that, that kept those local uh, uh, militant and got representation. They represent themselves, and it was, it was, it was a good lucky union, if I will say that. Well, what was the main thing that I, did you think at that time, during the 30s, 
that the union wanted was pay more important or the work conditions to the I one was just as important as the other. Everything was so bad. Oh, it was worse. And uh, the control of the, of the, especially the textile mills of the people very live. The company they didn't even tell them, that's right, that. and they didn't even tell them how big a house they could rent. Mm-hmm. If you had a wife and, and two or three children, you could only give them maybe a three-room house. And uh, most people came down and used to work and were in debt, and they stayed in debt to the, to the company. So I saw people who never drew a penny in their pay, in their pay and debt. Never got a, the only money they ever got was when they go and take what we call clacker or doodaloo or strip. We call, well, everybody had different names for this uh, tip that they got. You know, it's going to go so much every Monday to go and have to and it's going to ship it to, to trade at the company store. Well, they'd sell that 10 cents on, uh, for 9 cents on the dollar. They'd, if they ever got hold of the money, some of them they would never gotten the money. They'd take this and sell it to people. They'd sell them a dollar worth of that for 90 cents. And, when they, and they'd, they'd take the money out to the doctor. How the team now was paid. I remember my first experience when I went into work and they charged me uh, 10 cents a week for ice to the wash water and I never did, we never had the wash water. Oh. And you took a penny out of every dollar you earned to pay the doctor. So you used them or not, you paid for it. And if you lived in a company house, that rent came And you we were just actually slaves of that job. And so you might it. never see money. That's right. Didn't it? And I'm just kidding. I saw it. I knew it happened. Well, I really lived through it and saw it. And <clears throat> even before I went to work, I saw it. And I lived in Alabama City. Before I went to work, I saw it. Well, that's what happened. Well, I didn't know that. 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 My father worked in the field in Alabama. And I used to work with this meal going to school. Because it was only school to go to. It was a black school up in the middle there. And it was no, it was a public school, but the mill had donated the land and, mm-hmm. and the building. And uh, I'd see women, if the smaller children, some of them didn't go to school, they were very lax. I don't even know if they had such a thing that people had to send their children to school back then. I don't remember, but I know a lot of them didn't go. I can know that a lot of white children. Mm-hmm. The, the, they have to stay home and take care of the little children because the mothers were so mm-hmm. And at 10 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon, they took the, the nursing babies up there and they left them outside the mill and put on the grass and there's the baby. And uh, I, I saw those things and, and uh, then I went to school and looked back and went through the mill village to the school, and I, I knew the conditions, and when I heard his organizing, I, I uh, was very anxious, just like I said, yeah. And I was still a volunteer organizer. Excuse me, just a minute, let me He gives his own words ideas. But if they could just have done something about get more federal aid education at this time, a little more federal control, I think, of the school system. You know, my niece is a teacher, and you know, she tells me that the books are well, they, she, in Alabama, she tells me the books are out of When you can get them. My she mother said, is a teacher. She's, she says, you know, that's, they, they, they don't even have enough. You'd think in this uh, 1974, school systems would at least have sufficient books for all the students, but they don't. Well, it, it you see, that's the answer to anything, I think. And I don't care what, if people, I think yeah, people say today that uh, girls don't need education. Or, or education, you know, you just, 
if you're not going to do something, you don't need it. I think you need an education to be a better human being, a better citizen. I don't care what you're going to do if you're not even going to work. Okay. I'm, uh, I hope I can quote you on that. I'm going to give a speech at an organization next week on my views of education uh, for older people mm -hmm. who are retired, perhaps, and, and uh, what they can do with their time. Oh, let me tell you. These, the, we use a, we have our eyes of retired. We put our newspaper on our retirees. And we form organizations. We, give them, we have social services departments. And when we need tickets or any kind of people, and those people love to do it and help in politics. And uh, the man uh, that has got a chapter here, Senior Citizens Club here in Atlanta, and the man who started it was there at the convention of the. Uh, but he had worked for years. I believe he was in the line of transit system anyhow. He's 78 years old and he formed this club. He said most of them are sympathetic for unions. And it certainly is. You see, this was a certain knit. There's a lot of things that can't knit. Hell, I can throw a straight seam. <laughs> I mean, there's more important things to do, I think, than just going to do something to take up your time. I hope I, I meet women today, and I'm 63. I meet women today working in these plants in their system. Well, I'm going to work very long. It just, just makes me so darn angry at these women who are much younger than me. Oh, right, give up. Give up. And it's just so pathetic. There's just no sense in it. And I think that just, if I could retire, I hope. I'm not going to retire as long as I need a job. Because <laughs> we have we have some folks to retire from 68. But you know, I see a lot of people. It's going to the person. That's but right. If you don't have some folks to retire, there are some people who are not physically able to continue to stay I mean, we have some. But I think, so I think it's true. Well, one thing that's interested me so much is in my job, I work with um, the EEO provisions. Um, part of it is um, my boss and then I as his assistant are supposed to more or less work as advisors to department managers and so forth to um, ensure our compliance with federal regulations. And uh, thinking about the struggle that women have had in the business world for equality, yet from what little I know about the union movement, your own life, for example, it seems to have been perhaps equality for women in the labor unions long before it became the thing in any other area. In our unions, particularly because we have so many women in it. That's why we can't get another one. We were concerned with the legal rights for women in the ERA. It's because they don't see the women. Like a lot of women who work in the trade for the majority needs are the men dominate the industry. Like the women in the printing trade and things like that. And we have very ethical women who are the women are all We've got a lot to do, and I stand. And they can, they can, some of them fall off of the, you know, we have very few of them fall off of the, you know, proper games for And uh, they don't get excited about it because we have never felt that. Now, I was expecting, I mean, I've heard of many other women, a lot of women. You might look at another one. This is another one. This is another one. This is another one. Do you think in the mills or in the plants that women didn't want to work for a woman for a woman? That's right. That's right. That's what I'm saying. And, and yeah, let's see if you ever see a woman. And you got this. I feel that even today. A lot of women are not. They just look at their own men. I know the man. And, and being in his life. Ooh. I used to be a business person. I could set the greetings in the other time. But certain parents just wouldn't let me in the room. I had to call. He'd go in the guy, I had to call a guy in, and he'd say the same thing as I said. He'd just throw you in the room. Now that was his appearance among what most men, men today in the industry are more intelligent along this line. They realize most of them I find recognize at the moment. Well, we know I, well, I'm dealing, still dealing with my industry. 
and they know we know our illness. How does the amount of feel about the credit situation for women? It would seem to me that being that there are so many women members, that the fact that a woman who may be working in a, in a mill and head of a family and who needs credit. The men are so many of us that we teach them to the women. People have never heard of this. So we go down and try to And she's not heard of it. And that's the most certain of the truth. So the the uh, the union have a is a is a policy would be for we we are uh well what do we have in the labor union? labor movement now, called CLEAN, Coalition of Labor Union Women, for the purpose of promoting more and better economic women. The major thing is to get more women to participate in the labor union. We have women in the working union and in the plant. The majority of men just don't go to the union, they belong, they just don't go because the men control them and they're trying. I say, well, if the only woman she thought for the right to the family or in the room, she will get it. I do it among the majority of women. So I, I can say that she can find it. If I like her, she will get it. But very few women, just like in, in any of the world, are strong enough to put up the fight. Or a means for that reason in forming women. Is part of the reason for this apathy on the part of women in the union, when a, when a union makes a contract to try uh, per hour of, of the labor is for everyone who works, right? So the women have the same pay as the men. Yeah. So that they don't uh, run into the same discrimination as in, say, a, a company well, where they we, we have always had that in our contract. It's the same for each other. We have always, we have never had discrimination as to pay. Um, we are sure of the union. And I think that this time it was a good thing. It wasn't a national policy, but it was a policy. You know, a lot of little things that think that the government can do that. It's a very good job for the union. We have certainly good jobs, but it's that was too hard for us. And uh, wherever we go, we have a good job definitely every day. To try to give them more employment, and more get some balance in the end area for their job. So there's not one. We have a lot of things about the family. It's only the only man still wants to do it. Only the man was based in the world market. Uh, but and so on, but in the world market. Things like that. The job of the work was done by me in the old days. So there's still a lot of men being like machine operators in the world market. In the world market. And most of the men, if the women didn't go out and work, very few women in some jobs, they were well women went out and work. Whether it's school teachers or just nurses, or we found even in the hospital, there's a certain And I know I'm not a small town, I'm not sure that I grew up until. The government factory came in and they had a new plant. Came I understand there was some kind of a struggle with the United Mine Workers and the Amalgamated Clothing Workers in Tennessee. Now, Dr. Gracie told me that and left it at that. He said, mm -hmm. you want to find out more, go ask. So. Well, I think that this part of it, uh, most of it was the personality, the cause of it, I think. And I, I think I thought it was more personality than anything else between Hazel Hillman and, and Lewis. You see, uh, Was this in the days when they were forming the CIO? No. No, 
Jesus in 19 it started happening and Johnny Lewis left the I.O. Uh, Johnny was in well my this is my personal opinion of what I gathered and talked to. Johnny Lewis was kind of an a arrogant type of person. He felt like that uh, he had done a wonderful job as a leader of the United Mine Workers and the CIA. But he began to get the feeling that he was it, that he was the whole union. He would speak out for the CIA without consulting the rest of the things as well. And uh, we began having those problems. But he, he made a statement. He supported, well, you know, John Lewis was a Republican until Franklin Roosevelt. And he was the first time he voted Democratic. And a lot of people, if that's wrong, he was a Republican, but my father was a Republican. Because he thought he was the most progressive party. And, and his first time he had a Republican Democrat, because he thought the Democratic Party was becoming more liberal than the Republican and represented more for his belief that had to be done. And uh, he made the statement, uh, I think the same was faced, that if uh, Linda Wilkie, who was running his first of all, uh, it? Mm -hmm. for him, it was when the uh, Linda Wilkie ran his first of all. But if Wilkie, he was a brother Wilkie, if Wilkie was defeated, he would resign as president of the CIA. And he did. Then he set up what was known as, uh, he set up a union called the Mystic Fifty of the United Mines. It was organized by products, so gas, plants, chemicals, and uh, then he set up what was known as United Construction Workers. Uh, the the United Mine Workers. So he pulled out the area of the center. That was to organize in the construction field. There was a time when we were preparing conscription started to begin to build a place and prepare for the stuff of drawers coming in. So this construction work began to pick up. So he was, and his brother, Denny Lewis, was sitting in charge of the United Construction Workers. And uh, Captain Lewis, who was born, was the president of the United Construction So he began to try to organize everything. Well, they felt that they had had best organized that. They felt they organized those two third factors in the policy of the five. Which we appreciate and did have their head up in the big fact that it was meant to be living, working there and have people in the mind. But we felt that uh, that's what we're supposed to do in the labor business, the labor business. And uh, we had given them $100,000 at the beginning of the CIA, I mean, the beginning of the labor Move that we were really up there, we'd give you that money alone with a hundred thousand dollars. And if organized, he would go. And the reason is so I mean, he was always a bad thing to me. The same thing with a small union, but uh, a lot of men's always been very careful how they handle their money. And we were able to do that with a union at the time. So they came in there and said, Legitimately, the new decided to win the split, and the win the split. The new decided to attack the split. Why? And they had the regular, the regular game plan. They had five families. Then, he had had teams who got to hide me as an organizer. But the new plan, he, he was just so worried that he couldn't go back to 